the one who goes too far Who's not content to settle down That's not how you use a lover! Stop doing that! <laughs> Are they having too much fun? We still good. Yeah. Uh, trying to get these bubbles open. Can you please open these bubbles? Thank you for asking so nicely. Welcome back to the High Performance Build, everybody. This is, again, our house. I am the builder and general contractor. We designed this place. We have, of course, all kinds of people who are helping with this, uh, one of which is our structural engineer, who specified a lot of the connections and the types of wood and the lengths and the um, engineering specifications, which are really important on a house that's not a box. They're building a neighborhood down the street, and they put up one of those houses, I swear to God, in two days, and it's all sheathed and dried in. That's partly because that's a very simple shape. They're building a box on top of a box. Not very difficult when you're talking about stuff like this. We have some little different stuff going on. So as you can see above me, we have the rafters for the second floor installed. Those are two by tens, fairly simple to do. We have clips where they're being hung from the central, what's called the king rafter that you saw us put up without a crane in the last video. And now we're working on these huge roof spans on the side rooms, one of which is the living room and kitchen, one of which is the music studio. So for that, we are using eye joists. This is an engineered wood product. They call it the eye joist because it looks like an eye. So we have about a 25 foot span here and you can't do that with normal dimensional lumber, a two by 12, for example. We could do it with like timbers, but that would involve a total re-engineering of our house because those are much, much heavier and so they would press down on the foundation and on the exterior walls, all that stuff. Now another engineered wood product that we could have used is called web trusses. We chose eye joists instead. People ask us why, if you care so much about indoor air quality, would you use a wood product that has a bunch of glue in it, uh, one of the chemicals in which is formaldehyde? That's a great question. First reason is uh, an eye joist can be cut in the field, as you can see. We need to do that because this house is complicated enough and big enough that we're not building a box on top of a box and we can't order a bunch of web trusses which are made of two by four sections, basically, at the lumber yard and have them all be exactly right. I can't order a bunch of them that are 25 feet long exactly and have them actually fit this house. We're having to literally cut every single one of these to a slightly different length within eighths of inches because the walls do slight variations. We would be totally screwed if we had done web trusses. So that's one thing. Second thing is that we have a ventilation system, which is going to take care of any of the chemicals that are coming off of this. Um, now, people are wondering, is all engineered wood going to off-gas into the house? Well, the question is, can you smell what OSB and plywood smells like? Because if you can smell it, then yeah, there's stuff coming out of it. Those are generally called VOCs. Most of the stuff that you smell in the world is VOCs, volatile organic compounds. That's what a lot of people are worried about. Again, if you have a ventilation system, not so much a concern. Also, VOCs are not a great metric to grade the toxicity of an indoor space. Now that we have to use an engineered product because we've got such long spans and we have to be able to cut them, so it comes down to eye joists. By the way, let me say one other thing. It's funny, these people who market these are very, very serious about it. And part of the reason that I see why is that it makes no common sense that these things are actually as strong as a two by 12. Because you hold them and you look at them and they're real floppy in all the directions except for the one that matters, which is up and down. It's very, very strong in this direction, up and down, which is the one that matters. Um, so of course there's a lot of marketing around how amazing these are, and you can see how amazing I think in general engineered products are over dimensional lumber in other videos. Um, I'll say that they have their problems. The clips that we're using to put these in look like this. They have a little hinge here that basically we're gonna sit the joist up in and then put this to the right angle these all need to go on the outside of this ledger. A ledger is a big piece of continuous lumber that you're gonna be hanging other things from in the direction perpendicular to it. So these are going on out here. You can see the bottoms of them here. To put this on, I need 19 one and a half inch nails. Um, that's a lot of nails. So of course I've got my nails in my little baggie on my leg when I'm out there. 
And I'm gonna go over my rig here that I'm wearing in a second, but the other important thing is this. I found this on a YouTube video for chance. It's called a pneumatic nail driver or a palm nailer. You can see it weighs about two pounds. Uh, and what you do is you just put a nail in the end of it. It's magnetic. Don't push too hard because it'll start driving it into your finger if you do. And now this thing is loaded and you can just start driving nails into things. It's pretty great. If you're hanging things with hangers like this and you do not have one of these, your life is gonna be hell because you have to drive each of these with a hammer in that case and that's just not gonna work. I could do one of these in less than a minute, which is what you really are looking for. So once you've got all this hanging on you, you can get out into the space where you're gonna be installing this. This is not a fall protection kit. This is a climbing rig, so I needed mountain climbing equipment. Each of these is rated for 3,000 pounds. Each of these is rated 5,000 pounds. And my climbing uh, harness is rated for uh, some, you know, some insane amount as well. So this is all really serious equipment. And what I'm gonna do here is get out. So now I've connected this, connect myself to the rig so that I don't fall. And now, I'm out where I can be hands-free working on this stuff. Again, all hands-free pneumatic nail driver right here, nails right here, and I'm able to do my work. I'd much rather be hanging from this thing over dead space than being up on that ladder that's 16 feet tall, I, I, for some reason, being on top of a ladder and hanging over empty space are totally different experiences for me. I would re much rather hang. As you can see, we've got about a dozen rafters in at this point, which I'm very happy about. They're all working out within about an eighth of an inch. I had to play around with the clips a little bit. Um, when you start nailing in, sometimes if you start in the wrong place, it'll push the piece of wood out further away from the thing that you're trying to really fasten it to. So I had to learn over the first couple, but I was confident in that. There's always a little bit of a technique with this stuff. Technique is obviously very important. Tools are cool, but if you don't have technique, you don't have anything. So learning as you go is very important. As you can see, the one thing over here that I'd like to point out is that the rafters end right at the edge of the exterior wall. That is purposeful. We will have two foot eaves. I was gonna try and put three foot eaves on here, but my structural engineer said no. They said we can't guarantee anything. And so I said, well, what can you guarantee? So two foot eaves are gonna go outside that, but we're gonna first finish up the wall so that the wall sheathing contains the roof rafter edges. And then the roof sheathing starts right there. So that we'll have essentially built a box, which is a simple shape. And if you know about home performance, you know simple shapes are better for air tightness, water tightness, bug tightness, all that stuff. So we have a perfect box right there. Then we're gonna build the eaves onto that. 
And so you can stay tuned for that. Obviously, keep watching this series. If you have anything to say, please like, comment, subscribe. Tune in next time. Thank you.